If it hadn't been for Apple putting that YouTube album on all of our phones in 2014, I probably never would have heard of YouTube. Well, that's probably not entirely true. Probably would have heard of them eventually, especially with this channel. This is a subscriber request video. Go ahead and leave a like down below because the video is about to be lit. Go ahead and subscribe if you have not and turn on my notifications to be notified every single time that I upload. So first track we got on here is Where the Streets Have No Name. Atmospheric. It sound like a bride about to get to walking out or something. I feel like it's my damn wedding day. Pretty solid intro track. I'm liking what I'm hearing so far. Hopefully by the end of this album, U2 has another fan. Where the Streets Have No Name is the third single from U2's 1987 album, The Joshua Tree. It was written by Bono in response to the notion that it's possible to identify a person's religion and income based on the street where they live. Where the Streets Have No Name is known as one of U2's most popular songs and the music video for the song features the band performing on a rooftop in Los Angeles, California. The video won a Grammy Award for Best Performance Music Video. 15 years after the song's release, U2 performed this song during the halftime show at the Super Bowl while the names of the victims of the 9-11 attack scroll behind them. Let's get to the next track. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Another great track. I really was a fan of the instrumental on there. Like they had a little shaker on there. I love the energy of the singer. Not too familiar with names right now, so bear with me. That's something that I always enjoy in music, just energy. Energy and, and emotion. I also like just the idea of that song, bro. I have climbed the highest mountains, I have ran through the fields only to be with you. I have run, I have crawled, I have scaled the city walls, but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. I feel like a lot of times in life, we search and seek things in places where they are absent. Two of the biggest examples of that is the quote that money can't buy happiness and the grass is always greener on the other side. From the outside looking in, you always might think, oh, when when I get this, if, or if I had this, I would be happy, or I, I would do this, or I would do that. If you're fortunate enough to ever get to that other side, you might find that it's actually unfortunate that you got to that side. The subject bottle is searching for is left without description. He doesn't tell us what he's pursuing, just that he's searching with a single-minded focus and great longing. Next track we got on here is With or Without You. I've been enjoying these instrumentals a lot. Slide of hell and twist of fate On the bed of me she makes me wait This is probably my favorite track on here so far. It's just a lot of different things that I liked in that track. There is something very familiar about this, but I really like that track, man. I really do. You can grow an addiction to something that you know isn't good for you. It creates this dilemma and almost like a war in your mind. I've grown such a dependency on this particular thing, whether that be drugs or um, people, just anything. One thing I've learned about habits is that those things are placeholders for a deeper issue. With or Without You was released as the lead single from the album, The Joshua Tree. It was the band's most successful single at the time. It features sustained guitar parts played by guitarist The Edge. That's a hard name. Y'all remember Edge from WWE? The song originated from a demo recorded in late 1985. Trouble Love Song, the track's lyrics were inspired by Bono's conflicting feelings about the lives he led as a musician and domestic man. Try number four, Bullet the Blue Sky. Hey. That 
that song was pure energy. I'm Bullet the Blue Sky. Bullet the Blue Sky is one of the band's most overtly political songs, condemning U.S. foreign policy for causing unrest in Central America in the 1980s. The song includes references to biblical passages. Bono traveled to El Salvador, witness villages being firebombed, and this experience inspired the lyrics of this song. Live performances showed the band being heavily critical of various political conflicts and international violence. It is their seventh most played live song with almost 650 live performances. God damn. It's crazy because this shit probably like pissed people off. Next track, Running to Stand Still. not one of my favorites. I ain't gonna lie, them high notes was kinda crazy though. He's kinda hitting those, I ain't gonna cap. Next track we got Red Hill Mining Town. The focus of this song is on the National Union of Mine Workers 1984 strike in England. During recording, Bono was displeased with an early vocal take and wondered why his voice made him sound like a rich man with the pound notes stuffed in his pockets <laughs> when it's a song about unemployment. This is a very, um, this is a very political album, man. Next track is In God's Country. God's Country was a difficult song for the band to record, which they put down to not being trained musicians, and they do not speak overly highly of it. Bono has stated that he originally didn't know whether the song was about Ireland or America, but eventually dedicated it to the Statue of Liberty. Lyric speaks of a lack of political ideas in the West, which Bono later contrasted to the revolution in Nicaragua, where he had traveled during the recording of the Joshua Tree. Next track is Trip Through Your Wires. <laughs> That was another enjoyable track. Um, won't say it's my favorite, but it was a diff. There's a couple of different things I liked in there. Um, I like the fact that in some parts, if the vocals were just a little bit higher, like the notes were just a little bit higher in the vocals, it would almost sound like he was yodeling. I kind of like yodeling a little bit. I don't know why, bro. It's kind of hard, bro. Like, you remember the little boy that was at Walmart yodeling and shit? The last long day she said goodbye. That shit was hard. The song has a bluesy rhythm and features lead singer Bono on harmonica. It was consistently played live through the Joshua Tree tour, but has never been performed since. That sucks if this is like your favorite song. Next track, One Tree Hill. Oh. You can tell he be really feeling these lines, boy. He said, oh, great ocean. Um, not one of my favorites. The track was written in memory of Greg Carroll during the Unforgettable Fire Tour. He was killed in July 1987 in a motorcycle accident in Dublin. May his soul rest in peace. The lyrics reflect Bono's thoughts at the funeral and reflect on his first night in New Zealand when Greg took him up on Tree Hill as well as paying homage to Chilean singer, songwriter, and activist Victor Jara. Next track is Exit. I didn't know how I was gonna feel about that at the beginning, bro. Um, I, I was getting very tired. I was getting very tired listening to the beginning, but then there was a switch of energy. Exit was developed from a lengthy jam. Damn, bro. This site be tripping. Exit was developed from a lengthy jam that was recorded in a single take and edited down to a shorter arrangement. The lyrics, which portray the mind of a serial killer, were inspired by lead singer Bono 
reading of Norman Mailer's 1980 novel, The Executioner's Song. Robert John Bardo used Exit as a part of his defense, claiming the song had influenced his actions. What the fuck? I would never let somebody get away with that defense. Oh, this song influenced me to blah, blah. But music is very powerful, man. The last track we got on here is Mothers of the Disappeared. <laughs> For some reason that that reminded me of like Nirvana. It's a couple songs on here that re reminded me of kind of Nirvana sound. That was U2's The Joshua Tree. My final thoughts on it: very enjoyable album. A lot of the songs were very intentional and very specific. And where I can appreciate those specific songs, they kind of lacked in relatability to me. On the flip side of that, there were some very relatable songs on there too that I enjoyed. I am open to hearing more U2 now though, uh, I will say. I, I like the energy, I like the melodic approaches, I like the instrumentals. Although this album isn't something that I'm probably gonna be playing in my spare time, I will say that as, as a young musician, I really appreciate this.